Excuse me. Hello and good evening. So it's a slight delay. Um, something to do with dog sick, but let's not go into that. Right, okay. So tonight's um, live chat is going to be about the part three and um, the part three and overview generally. If you ask some questions, that's fine. I'm not going to keep it too long winded and go into too much detail um, because this set of videos are for people that are thinking about it. But if you want to ask some questions, that's absolutely fine. Well, certainly in the next few days, we'll do a much more in depth um, live chat on part three, phase one <laughs> and phase two. Okay, so I might as well get started. Um, so basically, part three is the third and final test, funny enough, and you're only going to have three attempts at it. So it's really important to get it right, like like the um, part phase, part two really, isn't it? So it's important to get it right. So it's two phases. Um, phase one is about, is normally the word picture that people hasn't done the subject before. So if they're doing a merging and turning, they may well have done um, so if you're doing emerging, they may well have done turning, and by the other way around, they might have done turning, they might be doing done emerging before. So you, you can link them together in the briefing, but the important thing is when you move, the examiners are there to test your ability to instruct, so it's really important that you give full control, you give full education, that you're in complete control of um, that pupil, in this case, the examiner, which is a bit different when you teach a learner, because when you teach a learner, you're not necessarily going to take that much control, certainly if you're using a client-centered approach, then you'll, you may let them have a play with it in a controlled environment, of course, make mistakes, talk about the mistakes and see if they can come up with the solutions. With the part three, it's completely different as the part three stands at the moment. So you wouldn't let them breathe unless you give them permission and it has to be the right type of breathing. So you really do have to keep control. And one of the main faults here, one of the main things where people go wrong is the, they tend to um, let the examiner make faults or they're certainly told to let, let the examiner make faults and deal with them, known as the core comps. But also, level of control and um, level of instruction is, is linked into the um, core comps. So the lowest mark on level of instruction has to match that of the core comps. So I tend to say, get the instruction right, and then the core comps don't matter. So if you're in full control and you're educating, that's important you educate, then there's no reason why the examiner will make faults. Only reason they might make faults on a phase one if you're taking complete control and educating is because you're not watching. So if you say, for example, check the middle mirror and they see you're not watching and they can normally hear you're not watching. And what I mean by that is if you say, check the middle mirror, check the right mirror, there's no way you're watching because it's one command at a time. You don't do the second command until you've seen the first command carried out. And if you're saying, check the middle mirror, check the right mirror, there's no way you're watching because there's no way the examiner has been that quick. So check the middle mirror, good. Now check the right mirror, good. Now cover the break, you know, and you're, you're doing one thing at a time. So you're literally, controlling one thing at a time and as I say don't do the second thing to the first things carried out and that's a really good way to get your timing right it's a really good way to nail this really um, stick to that rule and you can't go too far wrong it takes a bit of practice of course and one of the main things is to control the speed first so if you control the speed first no more than 10 miles an hour as we go down this road because there's an emerge up there we're going to be doing emerging in a minute brought yourself some time because time is obviously a problem as I found just now rushing around um, Whereas if you control that time, then you've got much more control of the whole situation and you're going to be able to control and educate. Important thing with education is you can't always educate straight away. So you wouldn't be able to say, check your middle mirror. We're checking behind us because if someone's close, we're going to start breaking earlier. You're at the junction by now, aren't you? So, so you always control first because you can't control later. It's not possible. But you can educate later. So you could give that information later on. So you want to give that information when this, the car is static. In other words, you've stopped at the end of the road or you've completed what I'm going to call the manoeuvre. Manoeuvre. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. In other words, you've got round the corner and then you can say, well, the reason I got you to check the middle mirror there was and the reason I got you to check the left mirror was and, and you can you can give that detail. So I'll give an example of where you could do detail is um, when you're at the end of the road, you could say, right, pop into first gear, pop preferably before you stopped and then you've stopped. And as long as there's none behind, there's no reason why you can't give some becauses now. So it's important you get first gear otherwise when we come out we could stall and the car that you did have a time to get in front of could catch you up and cause cause them a problem all right where does the white light come into the car oh it's under the mirror if they say that and then you give them the reasons why it's important to use that reference point that you're not sticking out and etc etc <clears throat> so always give the because is when you get the opportunity but that doesn't mean straight away but if the car's static then the opportunity is there 
just check your mirror. So it's no problem if you're stopped at a junction to talk about the detail. That's, that's not an issue at all, as long as you're not holding one up. If you're at a traffic light, for example, you can go into detail. Pedestrian crossings, a bit different. They only last between eight and 12 seconds, depending on what they are and how wide they are and all that sort of stuff. Don't have a lot of time there, so you may not need to go into the because or have a chance to go into the because But once you're across the crossing, you're now going down the road, there's not another crossing in view, you can obviously go into the because then. So control, educate. You hear me say that all the time in the videos. It's so important because if you control and you don't educate at the opportunity, then the examiner will ignore you. So, for example, if you say stop at the end of the road, and it's obviously that's what your subject you're doing, they will stop because they don't know you're not going to educate at this point, do they? And then you don't educate when you're given the opportunity. You get to the next one, you say stop, they won't, they go a little bit further on because you didn't educate last time. And then if you don't educate that time, next time you say stop, they ignore you and go all the way out or stop a long way from the line. No long way over the line, or even behind, depends on what's the safest option. Well, out isn't safe, but as long as they can see properly, it's fine. They go out, and then if you say, look, it's really important you stay, stop when I say so, because by going out there, there could be a cyclist coming along, and they might have to go around you. So they go, brilliant, give me a because. But don't give the because just because you've been put under pressure, and you feel you have to give the because, you have to give it anyway. So you can be retrospective with the because, but the problem with retrospective is it doesn't do your heart beat any good, and it... You, you, you feel like you're out of control. So always be proactive where possible. Of course, this person's done it more than you have. They're more tuned in than you have. They've had more practice than you have. They're gonna get one over on you, absolutely for sure. But just deal with it. On the next one, control and educate. You know, get that education in. Even if it's retrospective, you, you say, well, if they don't check the mirrors, for example, carry on the rest of the routine. And then say, look, it's really important you check that right mirror because da 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 And if you don't see them, you could da 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 and then you'll be okay. Next time you say right mirror, they'll do it because you've got the because in. But try to get it in beforehand if you can, but only at the right time. If you get it in the wrong time, the timing of it's so important, as I said earlier, if you don't get the right timing right, what's gonna happen is the examiner is going to um, be doing other mistakes. So if you're given because it's on mirrors, like I said earlier, and you're going to the junction, it's gonna be the wrong gear, the coasting, all sorts of things are gonna go wrong. They're out of position because you're yabbering on when you shouldn't. So the timing on this is really, really crucial which is where practice comes in, of course. Um, so that's phase one, so control and educate. The, one of the main changes, it may not be on all the videos, and we're certainly gonna release a new site quite soon with new content, and particularly when the changes are announced, that um, you must start to ask details towards the latter end, so you must start to ask questions, sorry. So you've got the briefing, which is preferably four to six minutes, but it's gonna say 10, I'm gonna say 10 minutes, because the time to say hello, get in the car, that all counts in your half an hour. Then you've got 10 minutes of full talk for a give no call. So the only questions you can ask are questions you would ask a non-driving three-year-old. So what colour is the car coming? Um, is there a cyclist? You could ask a non-driving three or four-year-old that. They could tell you that. Couldn't tell you what they need to do about it. And that's where you come in. And then you start asking for the last 10 minutes to find out what they've learned from the previous 20 minutes. And then you can fill in these spaces. So if you say, so why is it important we check that right mirror before we turn then, Fred? I don't know, Blaine, you've not told me. Ah, I'll tell you now. And then you've, it's, it's basically covering your backside. But it's important you check what people have learned because otherwise you're either over-instructing because you're telling them something all the time or you just stop instructing and then of course you're under-instructing. By asking what they know, you automatically get your level of instruction right because you fit in your instruction to what the answers are. And that's really important. People can and do fail, but continue to over-instruct, particularly if the over-instruction is good in the respect to it's full of detail, that person's probably going to learn, therefore it's over instruction if you keep doing it. So it's important that you ease back a bit on it and you start asking. The trap people fall into at this point is they tend to drop everything. They think, right, I've got to stop talking now, I'm going to start asking, but they don't ask either, or they just ask on a couple of elements. So that last 10 minutes was really important either telling or asking. You must be doing one or the other. So you could tell the mirrors and ask the clutch, you could ask the mirrors and tell the clutch, you could ask the mirrors tell the clutch, um, tell the gears, you could ask all of them, but you must be either asking or telling, so you need to practice that. So what mirrors are you going to check on, middle and right? Okay, what gear are you going to be in, or first gear? Just stop for me, and then you can do the rest of the one again, or you could do a little bit of both. So you could tell them to stop, but you could ask them why they're stopping, and what's in, why is it important to use that line, for example. So you can mix and match. A lot of people, you know, it's quite important to to get this right, so and it's quite difficult to get it right. So it's important that you probably develop some sort of system. If I was training you, we would talk to you and we would go through what was best for you. But a lot of my PDIs prefer to just start with the mirrors, just start with the MSPSL. So 
after 10 minutes, you know, 20 minutes from the start, they'd be start saying, okay, so we're gonna go left at the end. Going, what mirror are you gonna check? Oh, middle and left, good, okay, and then just talk through the rest. Next one, what mirror are you gonna check? When are you gonna signal? Oh yeah, I'll signal about now. Okay, so what mirror are you gonna check? When are you gonna signal? And what gear are you gonna be in for this junction? Da -da 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 -da. And then at the end, maybe they're asking me, the Bukuzis. The Bukuzis are quite good to ask, so you could you could still tell if you wanted to. Again, this gives you some ideas to fit in. There's no dead way of doing it. You just got to ask some questions. So you could say you could you could carry on with the control element. Check your middle mirror. Check your left mirror. Just remind me why you're checking your left mirror. Hold it alert. right now. Bring the speed down ten miles now. Into first gear. Okay. Depends on timing and stuff because asking the Bukuzis, you can end up with a quite long-winded answer and you may run out of time for the rest. So you'd have to play with it and, and, and see. But the bottom line is you need to be asking questions towards that. I keep slipping, I don't want to go on here. Um, it's good in its case, I think. Sorry, I'm just moving around there. I hope it didn't feel dizzy. Right, okay, so feel free to ask questions. So that's phase one in a nutshell, really. And so on other, other ones, other webinars we do, or whatever these called, live chats, I can ask a sort of individual answer individual questions. I'm happy to hear if you if you answer. But I know it's a, a Sunday evening, and most people are watching the football, aren't they? My son's watching the FA Cup. Um, there you go. Right. Okay. So, and the other son's got to wait for his dinner to come out. The other one's that could be a disaster waiting to happen. But anyway, moving on from my personal issues. <laughs> so let's look at phase two. So phase two is a continuation of phase one. So by the end of the phase one, you should have been asking questions. I've just been saying, and maybe mix them with a bit of tally. Okay, when you start phase two, it's just on the question bit. Not yet because it's, but mainly control questions. So what speed are you gonna do here? So let's say it's, I don't know, let's go, let's stick with emerging again. You won't get two together, by the way, but stick with emerging. So tell me when you see an emerge. So it's always a good idea to get them to identify the subject because the reason pupils make mistakes quite often is they know what to do because you've drilled them in their routine for a junction, but if they don't see the junction coming up, they won't start the routine and you're, you're prompt for them. So when you say at the end of the road, turn left, you're prompt and they start their routine. Of course here, you don't know which junction they're gonna go and you certainly know which way they're gonna go because obviously it's, it's orchestrated by the examiner. So to get them to talk about the junction early gets them to tell you where they're going and that therefore controls everything, controls the speed to, to a great extent I find. So tell me when you see a junction, front eyes one up there. Okay, so we're gonna go right. So what means you're gonna check on middle and right? Yeah, what's, what's um, when are you gonna signal? What speed are you gonna be? What gear are you gonna be in? Where, where are you gonna stop at the end? Oh yeah, just fine there. Okay, where are you looking? How are you judging when you go? Tend to be what I call the control questions, so the what's, what, what speed are you doing? What gears are you going to go in? Um, what mirrors are you looking? That's quite straightforward. Do that a few times and then you could go on to because questions. So why are you checking the mirrors? Or get you know why are you going to use first gear? Why are we waiting until we can walk across? And you can dig a bit deeper, but that can come later on when you're a bit bored of your own voice. So, the structure of the phase two is to ask proactive questions. Really important. A lot of trainers say, "Don't ask questions. Just let them make a mistake." As an inexperienced structure, I find that you're much better off asking proactive questions because it works the same way as phase one works. Whereas when you're asking the questions, don't ask the second question until you've seen the first question carried out. You won't miss stuff because people miss stuff. And if you're looking for a mix match and it's not constructed, very easy to miss everything. Because if you're not asking proactive questions, in my experience, the examiner will make more than one fold at a time and will hack up to the junction in this case, because you're not in control. So, and I had um, I had a, um, someone did this recently, did it okay, but didn't didn't ask the proactive questions on every junction when they were looking for a fault. And the examiner said, look, you've got to at least ask me three or four times, three or four junctions of proactive questions. So you ask the proactive questions. So what means you're gonna check when you're gonna signal, da, 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 da. And then they will make a fault somewhere in that section. So if they don't check the mirrors, come on, check them. And then carry on with the rest of the questions. Because if you don't, they will make another fault. So you don't stop the questions until you've completed what I'm gonna call the manoeuvre. In other words, on this occasion, you've got round the corner, you've straightened up, you've, you've finished with the junction now. Now you can, go back to the fault. So really important, ask the proactive questions, continue to the end of that section or, or maneuver, if you want to call it that, and then come back to it, or if you stop. So if you stop at the end, you can analyze it there. Use the analysis sheet, which you can find on the site. I can put a link to it here later. It's completely free for anyone to use, whether you're a member of the site or not. The reason I like the sheet is it just gives you some sort of structure, and I think it's quite important. Use the sheet, don't necessarily learn it, but don't necessarily believe that you've remembered it, so take it with you and you can glance down at it. But don't use it for the first time on the test because you will 
you will sort of confuse yourself. You'll be looking down there rather than looking at the examiner. That's why I say don't analyze the fault. You're either stationary or you've got around the corner. Then you can't be looking down when you should be looking at them. Because once they've completed the maneuver, you don't need to be looking at them anymore because the subject is now gone and you're waiting for the next one to come up. So you've swiped the fault, now you analyze it. So you go through the sheet, and I won't go through all that now, and you will find there why they made the fault. It could just be they forgot. So they get all the questions right, and it's just, for want of a better way, word is a habit. So not checking the mirrors, or they're coasting. They tend to be habits that pupils pick up from, particularly if they're out with parents and stuff. So therefore, you just need to prompt them. So analyze the fault, find out what the problem is. So let's say they got them all right. Then on the next one, you would tell them, okay, we're gonna go left at the end, check the middle mirror, check the left mirror and you don't tell them anything else and don't go through the rest of the sequence watch the rest of the sequence but don't ask questions on it because your brain will wonder what, what stage you're at so when you're doing proactive questions you're looking for a fault once you've analyzed the fault you're correcting the fault so you just say right let's go off and sort this mirrors out and not forget the rest but don't ask on the rest watch them but in my experience examiners don't make a fault there unless you get a really good opportunity you know, they get a kid cycling across the end of the road, they might accelerate up because they might not get that for the rest of the half an hour. So it might take an opportunity, but you still watch them, but don't ask questions because your subconscious brain will think, what's the stage am I at? Am I looking for faults? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? And it's confusing and you're under pressure. So that structure to me is really important. So you tell them on the next one. So you've told them twice now, because you've put any information right on the analysis, which in this example, there wasn't. And then you've told them on the next one. And then the next one, you're going to go left at the end. So what mirrors are you going to check? Oh, middle and left jobs are good and well, I'm happy you've got that so let's go to another junction I'll see if there's anything else I can help you with and it's really important to put a phrase like that you don't have to learn that parrot passion it's important to put a phrase like that in because it tells your subconscious brain again right we're off again and now tell me you see a junction right okay so what mirrors you can check in the ideal world you've sorted out the mirrors you don't need to ask that question but it can get very complicated under pressure particularly to know what you've asked what you've sorted out and what you haven't so it's no problem we keep asking the whole MSPSL the examiners won't have an issue with if I get a six who cares? Two fours and a bollocking will do nicely. If you find you're quite good at remembering what they've done, you can drop that question because they've done it. But if you think it's going to confuse you, and my, when I train people, I find it does confuse them, you're better off just carrying on with the sequence. So right at the bottom of the picture here, aren't I? But never mind. Right, I'm going to try and sort it out. I'm going to see what I'm going to sort myself out. Wow, whatever. Right, okay. So let's give another example. So let's say um, they stop over the line. Hopefully, we're trying to be proactive. It's really, really bad now, isn't it? So we'll just leave that, shall we? So, so you're trying to be proactive. So if they're coming up the line a bit quick, you could just say stop. But if they, let's say they go over the line, you don't really want the fault to happen if you can help it. You want it to start to happen and deal with it. So I'll give another example. They're coming up to turn right and they're drifting towards the white line on the right. You could say, oh, steer towards me and just stop there. You've already temporarily fixed the fault. You could wait for them to be on the wrong side and you could deal with it then but that's letting the fault actually happen, and that's not ideal. So try to let the fault start to happen, then deal with it. And then ask the question, so where should you be positioned? Oh, left or center, and why is that? Oh, we don't know really. Oh, because um, you, you could disrupt people coming around the corner. Okay, what would the dangers be of disrupting people coming around the corner? Well, they could hit me if they're going a bit fast, or we could block the road up. Yeah, that's brilliant, okay. And how can you judge it? Oh, I don't know. So now you know, they didn't know why, and they don't know how. So this is what you're gonna work on. On the next one, unless you've stopped early, you could do it there and then if you stopped early but let's say on the next one you get them in the position you stop them and say oh where's the white line coming to the car oh it's by here by the air vent yeah that's brilliant that's your position remember if we don't if we're too far over we're going to disrupt the cars coming in just use their words it doesn't matter what it is okay that's brilliant on the next one so where are you going to position oh left us and how are you judging it oh, i'm going to use that reference what you show me then and why is it important to use that da, 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 da. as long as you get your input back then you know they've got it the examiner's not playing with you and off we go, right, let's find another junction, and, and off we go. And that's basically phase two, two in a nutshell. It's really important that you follow some sort of system because it can get all over the place otherwise. It sounds quite complicated, this system, particularly when I say it here and I do it quite fast, and I'll leave for that's better. And, um, but if you look at the demos on the website, the demo videos, and I've got demos of me doing all of them, you'll see how it all constructs well, and it does work. Um, you would think, well, the examiners are just gonna play me up. They're not gonna take notes, they, they do, and they do all over the country. I've not had one that I've heard of that's been a pain. The only time I've heard it's not gone that well is when people don't use the proactive questions, particularly on the first or second one, because examiners then start to make more than one fault. So if they make more than one fault, then deal with it. Analyze both faults, go and control both faults on the next one. Don't prioritise them, just do both. Um, because you've seen both, let's do both, otherwise you're starting to get behind the eight ball a bit. So it's quite important that you 
you grab it and you run with it and you you go forward and, and, and sort them out and then don't be surprised if you get five or ten minutes at the end where you're not dealing with a fault if you've got something like progress hence your normal position there's four possible faults there there's um positioning they're either too far to the left or right left or right they can't do both they could do both they can't get you to correct both so if you correct too far to the right you've off, you've always you've corrected too far to the left as well because you've got them in the correct position if you don't spot too far to the right they might start going too far to the left to get you lifeline to get you to spot it basically um, but they won't get you to analyze both faults. so if you've got too far to the left too far to the right progress too fast or too slow again exactly the same they might go too fast or too slow because they can't judge it so they could make both but once you've dealt with it and you've told them how to judge it or you if that's required then they won't make that fault again and hesitation has two forms it has a form of not being physically ready so waiting at junctions in third gear for example or with the handbrake up when you'd be better off that down given the circumstances um and mentally ready and that tends to be things like traffic lights or roundabouts coming up too fast stopping just as the opportunity gets there and then you miss the opportunities of planning looking ahead looking to the right particularly at roundabouts they tend to not look at all they look ahead or they're looking too much to the right and not seeing the blockers coming, etc. So that physical plan, that mental planning, sorry, that looking around, judging when you're actually going to be able to go is the other fault. So you've only got four faults there. So if they make four faults, if they make four faults and you deal with them pretty quickly, and we're not done mock tests on this, we can normally do it in 10 to 12 minutes. Then what are we gonna do now? They're gonna they're gonna not probably make faults. And and the reason they do that is to see if you're gonna over instruct, because most people like the sound of their own voice or just feel they've got to say something. I'm an instructor, I'm being paid, I've got to say something. Not necessarily. This person's test standard or got a work assessment should be quite a good driver. Abide the faults that you've dealt with. Now you've sorted those things out, so you shouldn't need to keep going on. So if you have an overwhelming desire to talk, and a lot of people do, you've just done a phase one, you're gonna really wanna talk then don't fight that because fighting your natural instincts is very, very hard. I know, donuts are terrible. So it's really hard, so don't buy donuts, I don't eat them. So what you can do here is you can talk, but just don't talk about the driving. So talk about the weather, talk about the football, da 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 da. And I've had, this is true, so I've had people um, talk about all sorts of things and it's not, not a problem at all because still keep an eye on them, and I'll come to that in a minute, but if you feel you've got an overwhelming desire to talk, don't start asking questions about the driving and stuff. Don't start asking proactive questions all the time because you've sorted out the problems. If you sort them all out, then then leave it and, and talk about something else just to to you know get to, to be able to talk but not to, to ever instruct. But still watch them because at the moment what they're doing towards the latter end of the test, I mean last few minutes, you know, last couple of left and turns, right turns or last pedestrian crossing before the test centre, they're starting to jump back in faults. And the reason I think that is make sure you're still awake. So if they jump, jump in the fault, start to accelerate towards the oh, just cover that brake. Oh, just remind me, why is it important we don't do that? Don't need to go for a whole analysis on media action. You've already done that, if you've done it on that fault. Just, and if you haven't, you should be proactive on it anyway. Um, just ask them to repeat it, and then you'll be fine. They're just making sure you're spotting it and you're not falling asleep, really. So you, what you could do is at the very end, you could just be a little bit proactive, questioning again, and you could say, I've got a crossing coming up, just remind me. Yeah, you know, and just pick something you think they're likely to do. You get a bit of a gut feeling after a while. Okay, so that's a nice, nice quick overview of part one and two, but that's what these sort of videos are about, really. So hopefully that's been been useful to you. Um, there's no questions coming in, so I'll give you a couple of seconds to ask me questions. If not, I do have another webinar this evening, another quick one at eight o'clock, which will be about um, the training license. Lots of people asking me about that at the moment. So I'll give my opinion on it, and I'll give, well, my opinion, but it's not, you know, it's neither one way or the other, but I'll give you some positives and negatives, and I'll give you some reasons why it can be good, why what you've got to do on it, and why you've got to make it work for you, and how to make it work for you. Um, and we can talk about that at, at eight o'clock. Hopefully I'll be here at eight o'clock, but if I'm slightly later, then it'd be the dog's been sick again, possibly, or the child's falling down the stairs. We don't have any stairs, but you know, you never know, do you? Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. People ask me questions, which is great. Remember, you can always ask me questions. Not, it's not great, but you know, <laughs> but you can always ask me questions underneath and I will answer them when I get an opportunity. Okay, um, thank you for listening. I'll speak to you later. Bye.